Hello and welcome to today's session where we're going to look at core stability. The ability to stabilise the pelvis and the torso, maintaining a strong position and being able to resist external forces. External forces that might influence flexion, extension, side flexion and rotation as well. And the ability to improve force production, force transfer. Hope you enjoy. Okay, before we start to look into exercise which we can improve our performance in this area, we're just going to look at spinal neutral. So the position where the spine is in its anatomically best position. Now, just through day-to-day -day life, postures change and people tend to be in bad positions. Positions which are quite common, be shown, shown by staff now, quite a lordotic spinal position, shown like so. Some people may have this position, sometimes called duck bum, something like that. Or we can have that classic desk position, like a really kyphotic upper body position like so. Head may be poking forward as well. So not ideal positions in to be able to generate force as well as resist force. To try and get ourselves back into a more neutral position, it's gonna take a little bit of conscious awareness. So stand yourself up nice and tall again. And we can start at the lumbar spine by just placing the hands onto the pelvis and just getting a little feel for tipping the hips forwards and tipping the hips backwards. Notice that as the staff member does this, his shoulders aren't moving. All the movement is coming from his lower back. He finds a position which is roughly in the centre of the two movements, the two extremities, and we'll call that that lumbar neutral position. You can also tense the glutes up slightly and it will take you into a more neutral position as well. At the same time, you're drawing on the abdominals bringing some abdominal tension on, not squeezing your abs as hard as you can, but just imagining that you've got a corset on and you're drawing that position in, bringing the belly button in towards the spine slightly. Then, shoulder position, if the hands come down to the sides, we can raise the shoulders up slightly, back slightly, and then drawing the shoulders down. Notice now, if we were to put a piece of paper straight down the body of the staff member, you can see that his ears, shoulders, hips and knees are all nicely in line. Call this the plumb line position, and it's the optimum position for you to be in for you to be able to, for you to, be able to generate force. The first exercise we're going to look at is the elbow plank, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Now getting a simple position correct is an important one. The whole purpose of the exercise is to resist extension. So the force of gravity is pushing the hips down. You are resisting this force by squeezing the glutes and setting a neutral position with the spine. Using the musculature of the abdominals and glutes to hold the position, as well as the shoulders as well. Notice how the shoulders, hips, knees and ankles are in a nice straight line maintaining that position. If you were to struggle, then you can go to the knees, but notice how shoulders, hips and knees stay in line. There's still abdominal tension on and you're still squeezing your glutes. The longer you can hold this position would indicate the more endurance you have in these areas. The next exercise we're looking at is the elbow side plank. So the force acting is the gravity once more, trying to force the spine into side flexion. You are resisting this by bringing the hips up, squeezing the abdominals, the glutes again working hard, and shoulder working hard to maintain that straight line position that we've discussed already. Again, if you struggle to make hold this position, you can regress by splaying the fleet, as shown there. And again, a further regression from this is to drop to the knees, bend the legs, and again hold the position. Notice again how the shoulders, hips and knees are still in line. Point to note also, the head is also in a neutral position. The reverse plank. So similarly to a normal plank, but in reverse. So the opposite muscle groups are now working. 
Yes, the glutes are still working hard, but the spinal erectors are also going to be working to maintain that spinal position, as here we're trying to resist flexion. Hamstrings will be working also as your feet drive into the floor to maintain that straight body line position as shown here. Again, maintain the position for as long as you can. If the reverse plank is too difficult for you, then we can do a glute bridge hold. So feet are shoulder width apart and quite close to the hips. Then you're squeezing your glutes and bridging up to a spinal neutral position. We're not overextending. And we're maintaining that position for a prolonged period of time. Notice again how the knees, hips and shoulders are in line. The final movement we're going to look at is resistance to rotation. So, maintain a stable base and setting a neutral position, the staff member has extended his arms out in front of him. He's now pressing his arms, in this case to his right, against the static object, creating oblique force, rotational force, as he holds the position. Okay, so next guys, we're gonna put those movements into a little bit of a circuit. So it'll be a nice metric endurance circuit where you'll spend 60 seconds on each exercise, uh, whether you can do the full 60 seconds or not, doesn't matter. Uh, go to fatigue and then just rest up the rest of 60 seconds before moving on to the next exercise. So for example, if you manage 20 seconds of plank, that's fine, regress. And then if you need to rest for the remainder of the 60 seconds, do so and you move on to the next exercise.